500. Name yet? Nope. But I think it needs to be a male. Why? Because then I will always be on top. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I had caught that. I wish I had caught that actually on camera. You need to say that again. What are you naming your? I've got the audio, so I can just, <laughs> I can just keep the audio and be like, because I was still recording. What's up? Jim here. Welcome back to J Street Moto. Welcome to the channel if this is your first time. A good friend of mine recently took an MSF course and went and bought a motorcycle. And she's been, you know, doing what she needs to do to uh, get comfortable on the bike so she can start riding it more. She asked me if I could come over today and just ride around with her in her neighborhood. And I thought it'd be a cool thing to record. Oh, look at that. Dead goose. I will uh I will show y'all more when we uh when we get to Kim's house. Right, so introduce yourself. <laughs> Hi, I'm Kim. Okay, and uh, Kim and I have known each other for a while. Ten and, years? Yeah, at least. Yeah. And uh, this might be 11. Yeah, something like that. Yeah. And uh, Kim decided she wanted to start riding a bike. Yes. What made it happen? So, I have always been around bikes growing up. My dad rides, always been around him, always wanted to. And when I was at the place that I was ready to, I started having a family and we decided for our family it probably wasn't the best time for me to start riding. So my kids are older now, but the story now goes that my uncle who restored a bike and he's a big car guy and bike guy and restored a bike and he, it was like, um, I can't remember the year, it was like a 1980, mm -hmm. um, was it Ninja, 1980 Ninja? Um, had it restored and had it with somebody working on it and he passed away before he picked it up but he had it paid for so when I heard that my dad and I were talking and I said I want it I want his bike and my dad said um, no you can't have his bike <laughs> <laughs> and I said well why can't I have his bike and he said because it's a street racing bike and you'll kill yourself and you've never never ridden a bike like that and I was like okay fair enough so I just, I got it in my head though that I really wanted to do it and now's a good time. So I took the motorcycle class and a week later purchased this bike and there's the rest is history. Okay. So now what you're doing is getting comfortable on it before you actually take it out into the real world. Yeah, at this point I've had it in second gear. There you go. <laughs> and that's about as far as I've gone is up and down the street in front of the house. That's good, but I mean it's it's baby steps when you're learning yeah, to Yeah, I've this. gone to parking lots and done some stuff and practiced turns and that kind of thing, but my hardest thing about riding is that I'm used to mountain biking. And everything I know, all my muscle memory from mountain biking will get me killed on a it's motorcycle. It's the opposite on a motorcycle. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so I'm always jamming the brake on the left, <laughs> which isn't a brake, and it's the rear brake on a bike. I drive a clutch, so I'm pretty good with a clutch in a car. I'm just, it's the muscle memory and hand stuff that's just really, I just need to wrap it and wrap it and wrap it and get used to it. Absolutely. What do you have to say to other females out there that might want to start doing this? I think you should if you want to. There's no reason why you can't. Okay, all right. Well, we're going to do some riding around the neighborhood and uh, we'll, um, I'll tape while we're riding and then let you see kind of what happens. I used to train Kim in martial arts and uh, I'm very used to her mannerisms when she's nervous and worried about how she does things. She's to a certain extent a perfectionist and doesn't like it when things are, are hard to pick up, but she's doing really good with this. Been improving quite a bit. Last time I was over here, we were just ducking into these courts and doing big U turns and then going back and doing another big U turn and doing left side one time, right side the next time as we kind of rolled through the neighborhood. This is the farthest she's ventured from her house. And 
much as you were. She keeps going. She's going to keep going straight. If you're watching this because you're new to motorcycling, what she is doing right now is exactly what you should be doing. If you're new and you've never ridden a bike before, spend some time going places that you're very familiar with and knowing how to get there. It's on the side. Okay, pull up there. <laughs> All right. What she's doing is just like riding around her neighborhood, getting used to the bike, finding out where the controls are. She recognizes it needs to be second nature for her. And so she's practicing in a safe environment. When I first started riding again, um, I had a little three mile loop that I knew leaving from my house that there usually wasn't a lot of traffic on and I could go out and do that. And as I got more comfortable, I'd go do it two or three times in a row without stopping. And it had left and right turns, it had varying speeds, all that kind of stuff. And then I just started expanding that loop and I did it pretty much every day. And I did that until I got used to it. And that's kind of how Kim's approaching this. She's approaching it the same way. You know, go out, get comfortable on the bike. You're gonna be stressed enough when you start riding in traffic. Trust me, you are. So you might as well go ahead and work out all the kinks and the bugs and figure out, you know, how does, where is everything on the bike? I need to be able to be able to grab it intuitively, not, you know, kind of, uh, 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 I mean, I don't need to think about it. I have to just do it. And uh, it's good to do that in a place where you don't have to worry about a bunch of traffic. You don't have to worry about a bunch of people doing stuff doing really good in this turn. She is not hitting the brake at all, which we've talked about in a former episode. Never hit your brake when you are, when your wheel is not straight. That is the most certain way for you to drop your motorcycle, ladies and gentlemen. The most certain way for you to drop your motorcycle. I'm proud of anyone, but especially females, when they decide at some point in their life, you know what, I'm tired of, I don't want to be on the back. And, and, and Kim's husband, Kevin, him and I are friends too. Um, he rode for years. He used to, a motorcycle was his primary mode of uh, commuting for a long time. And uh, Kevin doesn't have a bike anymore. He doesn't ride. But Kim had ridden on the back with him. She had ridden on the back with her father, of course. And uh, I love it when a woman's like, you know what? I'm tired of being on the back. I want to be on the front. I want to I wanna ride. Whoops. Oh. It happens. At least you landed in soft stuff. Sorry, I didn't mean to throw it on you. Oh my what? I won't. Yeah. That's fine. Go slow. Breathe. Relax. Know that you're completely fine. Just go back to the house. All right? done really good. Had a little, had a little mishap, shook her up some, so we're going to uh, go back to the house, debrief it, talk about it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I am, I am agreeing to this. I'll put that like in for any liability, I have agreed to all of this. <laughs> she has. I have. And she's being a trooper about it. I am. So, so Somebody as, can learn from my mistakes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. As you just saw in the video, <laughs> uh, Kim went into a, a cul-de-sac to make a U-turn. And uh, it was different than the other cul-de-sac she had been in because there was a vehicle parked at the apex of the circle. 
so she had to cut her circle a little tighter. <laughs> As she did that, there were a couple things she did wrong. Um, one was she wasn't looking where she wanted to go. And I know if you've been doing MSF course, you hear that shit all the time, and it, it really is true. And that is true with mountain biking, it too, is by absolutely the way. I should have known that. Biking. That is true with mountain biking. You want to look where you want the bike to go. Yeah. You, you have to. Um, because the bike's going to go where you look. And in this case, Kim was looking straight ahead, and she had, she had just done a U-turn in a cul-de-sac where she was able to use the whole thing. And so she was used to this curve being like this, and with this one, the curve had to be like this. And as she was coming out of it, she tried not to stall because she was in second gear. Um, it's my opinion she probably had her wrist a little too high on the throttle and a little too tight a grip on the throttle. Very likely. Because as she, she was in second, as she gave it gas not to stall, the bike jumped a little harder than she was expecting, which caused her weight to shift back, her wrist to flatten out and accelerate even more right in the direction that she was pointed, which was up that curb and into the grass. <laughs> Thank and, God it and, wasn't, and there's a ditch on the other there's side. There's a ditch so, on the other oh side. Oh my God, I'm so glad I didn't just so, into the ditch. So the bike's fine. The, the worst thing that happened was she got some dirt in some crevices and uh, and the handlebars got turned just a little bit and we were able to refit I them. got dirt on my clothes. Out there, she got some dirt on her clothes. And, and a really severely dented ego. Yes, she has, <laughs> her pride has been wounded today. It has been really wounded and I'm sharing with much humility. <laughs> but yeah, that sucked. But, but I'm no worse you know, for wear. I have a, my dent got a little bit bigger. I don't even know that the dent, I don't even know the dent got bigger, no. honestly. Nah. I wasn't going fast. You weren't going fast. And it did, I mean, you know, I mean, I will say, thank goodness I have an engine guard on there. Oh yeah, because that we kept had, the bike from we, landing on your leg. Yeah, we put one on after I got it. It didn't have one, and um, I'm grateful for that because I was able just to come out from underneath it. My leg wasn't stuck. Yeah. Which was helpful. But uh, originally, we weren't going to include that footage in the tape. And after Kim watched it, she's like, all right, you can put it in there. It might help somebody. So yeah. we're going to leave it in. And, but only and because I hope somebody learned something, not so it can be like a viral um, <laughs> motorcycle wreck. I don't want that. But no, I mean, it, it, she learned something. Yeah. And that's, that's really the I key did. to this, right? Every time you go out, if you're just starting, yeah. every time you go out, you need to learn something. And you need to be safe. And I will not ride by myself. Um, nor should because you. I obviously I would just be laying there with a bike on the ground in the dirt, not being able to pick it up right now. Yeah. So I don't want to ride when nobody can go with me or um, yeah. Yeah, but so I mean that's helpful. I just and it's only because I know my own abilities, and that's the big part of safety is knowing what you're capable of. Absolutely. And I just want to make sure I was getting it though. You were, you were doing great I, you know, for a minute. <laughs> and earlier, earlier in the video, I talk about how proud I was of you and how you had gotten more comfortable and you were, you know, cruising right along. You were doing all the things you should have done. You weren't hitting your brake when you were trying to make a turn. You weren't. Yeah. So that meant really, and this is something for y'all watching. Um, think back, right? You slow down before you enter your turn. Yes. Then you accelerate out of it. Yes. And you look where you're going constantly, right? And and she was doing all that until the last one. And the last one, the only reason she wasn't doing it was because she was worried about that truck. Yeah. The truck was parked. Sometimes you just need to ignore things and just pay attention to what you can control. Yeah. Right? I got, as soon as I pulled into the cul-de-sac, I went, oh shit, there's a truck. Absolutely. <laughs> I knew she did. I could tell by the way she entered the circle, I'm like, She's freaking out about that truck right now. And, uh, <laughs> I always made I was it out there. I was like, like <laughs> two feet from making it out of that. I was right there. When we were riding through the neighborhood, you were doing a good job of staying at the speed limit. Yeah. And and you seemed comfortable at that speed limit. I did. And the more and more you do that, the more and more comfortable you'll get. And then you'll be like, well, let me try 35. And then you go on a little bit bigger road. Yeah. And you, you know. I have a lot of neighborhood here, so we're gonna explore more. Yeah, and hopefully not find all the ditches. I know, well, not <laughs> find any of the ditches. I have, I, I was, uh, I was sitting there after the one car. I have to say, after the one truck in there, I was thinking, what if somebody has like five cars in a cul-de-sac? I'll just stop. No, you just have to make a really <laughs> tight turn then, because that bike will turn tighter than you're willing to turn it. Yes, currently. it will. And, and that's something you've got to get used to. Yeah. What else have I learned that I can share? Hopefully we'll do more of these. As I get better, you guys will actually see me doing 
great. One of these days, you're gonna see us riding out someplace to get lunch. I am or breakfast, ready for that. Oh, I'm gonna go like that, on the but street, I want street. That. Yeah, it's just time and practice. What else you wanna talk about? There was something that I wanted, oh, what you said about the throttle. Mm -hmm. um, with your hand like this or like this, yeah. um, having it flat, I, that's a, I couldn't figure out why I didn't, why I went fast. Because yeah, I wasn't, I wasn't intentionally hitting the gas. What she's talking about is, and think about it, and if I, you, I, yeah. whether you've ridden a motorcycle or not, you ought to be able to visualize this in your head. When you step on the gas in a car, it pushes you back. The torque of the car throws your body backwards. Right. And it, it holds you there as you're accelerating. If you ride your motorcycle with your wrist up in the air, sort of like this, and you're gripping the throttle really tight, and you give it a little Which gas I and was. it jerks like more this. than it than yeah. you're expecting, it's going to push you backwards. And when it pushes you backwards, your wrist is going to straighten out, and that straightening out causes you to roll the throttle. She was accelerating as she went up the curb and into the grass. And I was she wasn't slowing down. Well, I was accelerating coming out of the turn. You, you were, but then you went even faster. And then I, but what happened is I think I popped something and it jumped. And when I popped it, it, it did that. Back. And exactly. so I, I was like, why am I in the grass? Yeah. <laughs> so try so, as much yeah, as you that's can a, to that's keep a your really wrist good, flat. And that's just, a good piece you know, of advice because I couldn't figure out logically why I would hit the gas so hard at a, an idiot time to hit the gas. But I think what I did was had that whole, I still have to consciously think about that whole clutch and brake thing. And I was thinking about it. And when I let the clutch out, it popped. And when it popped, my wrist went boop, boop. Yep. And I went boop, right into the grass. That is exactly what happened. Those are technical terms, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> I, I should copyright those. You should copyright those. <laughs> Gonna sound counterintuitive, I know, for those that aren't used to it. You don't need to hold on to the handlebars with a death grip. You don't. You want to try and hold them like you're holding your girlfriend or boyfriend's hand. You want it to be real light. You're not leaving a bruise. And a lot of people, I know the stress kind of goes up. You're, you're exposed to everything when you're on these things. And it is dangerous, and everyone tells you how dangerous it is, but it's also fun as shit. So just be relaxed. It, the more relaxed you can be and the looser you can be, the more control you're going to have over your motorcycle. Yeah. The tenser you are, the less control you're going to have. I believe that. You, you know what I mean? It's just like that on a mountain bike. I will say, it's just like that in karate. It's like that in karate, too. <laughs> Martial arts, it's very Martial much like that. Martial arts is the same. If, you, if we haven't told you, this is my... I told him. Oh, I told oh. him. I used to. Okay. I used to train her. That's why I knew kind of where she was at in her head when she was driving out of the yeah. driveway. Yeah. And could make the statement that I made about perfectionism. <laughs> yeah. And I gotta get it right the first time. And if I don't, I'm gonna just mm, uh -huh. until I do. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But once I once it clicks, it clicks. I'm just still waiting for that. Yeah. And yeah. the click takes time and yeah. repetition. Takes practice and reps. Wait. Highly recommend the class. Get out of your head in the class. Yeah, the class is a must. There are some benefits to it, other than just the technical side of it and, and getting comfortable on two wheels and yeah. learning what everything is and learning how to practice, yeah. right? But, uh, you know, it's definitely something I recommend anyone do. And, um, and honestly, before I ride down the road, I was in parking lots and different places practicing for a while, just practicing, going diagonal, going through things turning through, it was empty parking lots, obviously, but yeah. going around different little medians in the parking lot and making so, you know, yeah, figure A good thing, because if there had been a car in the parking lot, you'd... you'd I'd have found it. One you'd, car. You'd, you'd, you'd have have right. it. it could have been like a parking lot, five <laughs> acres large with one car in it, and I would nail that one car. Because <laughs> that's how I roll. <laughs> At least you own it. I do. So you know, give advice. you own that shit. I do. My <laughs> biggest advice is to you give yourself some grace because, I mean, learning anything new isn't easy, but I've learned hard things before. Yeah. It's, I think for me, truly, though, it is a little bit of muscle memory. And, um, oh, it's 100% muscle memory. Trying to memory. figure out that because, you know, what do they say about teaching old dogs new tricks? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, and it's a complex skill, too, because you're doing a different thing it's with like every, it is, it's very much, the closest thing I can compare it to that doesn't require you to put yourself in danger is getting behind a drum set and thinking you're immediately gonna be able to bust out, you know, a Metallica song. Yeah. It ain't gonna happen. Right, yeah. Because you're doing something different with all the appendages of your body. 
And your brain can't think about that because your brain's got to think about everything it's observing around it. Yeah. And making sure, you know, you know, that person that doesn't see you, that you don't hit them because yeah. they aren't going to pay attention. So you have to get that muscle memory and then you can worry about what everybody else is doing. Personally, I am very focused on what I am doing. And yeah. um, I, I am praying that other people see me. So being in the neighborhood is fair enough, but it mm -hmm. isn't. Um, it's a quiet neighborhood, so it's a good place. It is. It's not su we don't have any super busy, busy roads. But you did good. Thanks Proud for your you. grace and not picking on me. Well, I wouldn't pick on you. Seriously? Well, I would, but not this early in it. Yeah, later we'll laugh. Later, later I'll pick on you way more. Later we'll laugh. Yeah, but later. right now, right now I want to maintain your confidence. So I I'm not gonna it. Pick My confidence on you. is fine. I'm still gonna I'm say, little, I'm gonna say you did good. I mean, there's a, a, you had you had one little thing go wrong today. Yeah. Everything else I saw today, I was like, damn, she's doing better than she did the last time I rode with her. Mm -hmm. And you were and you were doing not just better, but you were doing the right things. Yeah. And and that that made me feel good. I'm like, she's getting it. She's starting to get it. Yeah. And then you wrecked. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I'm like, story of my so life. One little thing. Story <laughs> of my life. <laughs> I don't even know if we can count life. that as a wreck, though. You didn't even rip your jeans. All you did was get some I grass didn't. stains I on them. I got grass stains on them. They, they'll, they'll, that'll come out with a little oxy. Yeah. Yeah. But I, no, no skin was ripped. My ego's bruised more than my jeans are dirty. For sure, the ego's bruised. Yeah. I mean, it happens. Yeah, my first words were, "Don't you, you can't you can't play that." You can't <laughs> and I was like, that. "Okay, my, I won't." My very first words, "You can't show that. You can't show that." And then when we watched it, I was like, "Yeah, it looked like I was just like eat boom." <laughs> it didn't look like anything. I'm like, it really doesn't look bad. No. I said, I think you ought to leave. I think we should leave it in. And she watched it, and she's like, "You're right. It doesn't. I don't look like an idiot." And I'm like, I told you. Well, and quite honestly, as long as somebody learns something from it, I think that's the most important thing. Yeah. As long as it helps somebody else. Everything I learn, I learned because I screwed it up. We learn by experience. Yeah. We do, especially with something like this, you yeah. learn by experience. For sure. And, and the worst thing you can do is have an experience and not do what we're doing, where you talk about it and say, hey, this happened. The biggest contributor to it was the fact that there was something in the circle that caused her to have to take a different line than what she had gotten used to taking in all these circles that are identical no matter what street we moved down and it was it was the unexpected yeah and then the really and then the wrist position exacerbated yeah the that's, unexpected. A, that's a big one like i totally could not like figure out what part of me why was i keeping to accelerate. the accelerate i mm -hmm. was like i didn't What's happened? Why am I not just letting go? Why am I not just hitting the brake and letting go of the gas? Like I, but I think, but I was holding on because I was holding on, and didn't want to fall. If I'd have let go, I'd have flipped off, and then yeah, I couldn't figure out why. Let, why accelerate? In yep. a car, if you see something, you take your foot off the gas. Yep. But on this, mm -hmm. clearly not always that simple. No. So it's not. Expect the unexpected. I can put that as the thumbnail title. Yeah. Expect the unexpected. Yep. But, uh, well, thank you. Thanks we for letting me, again. thanks for letting me record because, uh, you know, I know this is a new experience for you. People usually don't like showing their, their learning, their curve. journey, <laughs> their, their journey as they're trying to learn a new skill. Yeah. Um, I, I appreciate you being cooperative and wanting to do it. Well, really you do. are welcome. Again, as long as it helps somebody else. I, you know, people that watch it are going to get it, get something out of it. Well, I will say, be gentle with yourself and learn to laugh about it. Absolutely. Yeah. When it, when it happened, I was like, we'll laugh someday about it. I didn't think it'd be 20 minutes later. <laughs> I'm telling you, it's not, it's, it, it wasn't that big a deal. It's, yeah. it's going to happen. Yeah. I mean, this shit happens all the time. Yeah. I think we should do it. Like there, everybody there share your embarrassing, embarrassing your biggest story. Blooper. I want to do a share blooper your reel. Biggest share blooper. your most embarrassing story. So if you guys story. are watching this and you have one, tell us about it in the comments. Yes, comment us, and tell, tell us tell your... Tell us your blooper stories. Make me feel better. Yeah. Make Kim feel better. Because <laughs> <laughs> it's all about me, right? Yeah. No, not really. Not really. That was a joke. Yeah, if you knew this woman, you would know what she just said is the furthest thing from the truth. <laughs> <It really is. laughs> she is, she is, she is the least self-concerned person I've ever <laughs> met in my life. She cares about everybody else. So, yeah. All right. You did good. Thank you. I'm proud of you. Thank I you. Really we'll am. do some more. We will. We will. We will. Like always, like, subscribe, click the notification bell, share it with your friends.
you don't want to miss any of this content because there's <laughs> going to be more of it, I promise. <laughs> Hopefully you found this entertaining and always ride safe. <laughs> yeah, ready? One, two, three, shoot. Ah. Asshole. Really? <laughs> Peace out, bitches! <laughs>